Now, here's Ed Bird. Just sitting there looking at some of the people that, that I've interviewed, uh, Anthony Hopkins uh, on, on the opening sc uh, screen, uh, uh, Ray Charles, et cetera. But with me today is a man who just, I would include in that category, Mr. Marty Allen. With, with uh, because Before you, you say anything, I yeah. got to, every morning I get up and I go to the kitchen and I have a double espresso and a So there and I yelled, Karen, I'm supposed to be fed. Call Ed. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 it's, 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 see, the Ed thing rhymes see, with a lot. Know, like the, <laughs> you could put a lot. Call lighter. Ed. Yeah. Now, in the bed, you're not calling <laughs> me, right? <laughs> uh, boy, I haven't I, been up this early since the Army. <laughs> and, and, but for you, I'll do well, it. Well, and thank you. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, because you, you grew up uh, back east in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. I grew up. Yeah. And I was the kid. In, for, I was the kid that did all the crazy things. I had a. Like, what's a, what's a, the craziest thing you well, can recall? Well, if they had a party, I was the one that got up and started telling jokes and acting out all kind of things. Right. And 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 I had that feel, that, but I originally wanted to do journalism and go to school because I write a lot and 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 I wrote short stories and novellas and things that were important in my life and in everybody's life. I wrote it out and had it. I had a whole script of everything, but I had that feel that I was going to be a writer. an enter entertainer. Uh -huh. And uh, 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 it just started happening, and I started playing little joint. Ed, I played places, bars, every place. I went into one bar, and I said, I'm a comedian. And the guy says, yeah. And I said, do you use anybody? And he says, well, I could use you on a Saturday night. I'd right. pay you a dollar, uh, a dollar and a quarter or something like that. Right, yeah. So I went to the agent and made a deal. He took his 10%, and I, I worked it. And I played all kind of places like that, little joints. And I started building myself up becoming Marty Allen, Marty Allen. And then, you know, and then one day, uh, the agent said to me, I got you with a girl singer. And I worked with different girls. I said, yeah, all right, who is it? He said, Sarah Vaughn. Wow. I almost fainted. Sarah Vaughn, oh my, I, I went crazy. And she took a liking to me we did these shows, and, and she says, I'm going to recommend you. Because in those days, that, you know, the singers were the big thing. They used the comedians for 20 minutes, get the audience hot, and then the singer, and they forgot about the comedian. She recommended me to Nat King Cole, and his agent called me, and then when I... I headed for the coast because my cousin was going to Southern Cal, and I was going to take classes out there and, and work little joints, and that's when uh, Nat Cole picked me up, and I I did everything, and uh, and I had to make extra money, so I says I'm a dancer. I won all kind of dance contests. I was a national champion, in in and also in Pittsburgh. I was a state champion jitterbug dancer, mm. and and I, I won all kind of awards. So I says, "Oh, how can I use that?" So I took a portable phonograph machine, went to a very wealthy neighborhood, knocked at the door. The woman came. I said, "I'm a dance instructor. <laughs> I swear, tango, rumba, right, samba. Yeah. Would you be interested?" And you can I had about 15 women that that's how you came, got your dates in those days lessons. it was unbelievable yeah. and that's how i was making extra money that was great but you know but then uh, 
being with Nat was phenomenal. Uh -huh. uh, he was very classy, a nice man. And then Steve Rossi was a production singer at the Sands. He was the guy that, you know, when the girls came out, a pretty girl is like a mountain, whatever. Right. And he didn't like that anymore. Shows you how smart he was. <laughs> he just said he wanted to do yeah. something different. Nat says, well, comedy is always good, and Martin Lewis are hot, and there's always room for another comedy team. Right. And I have this guy, his name is Marty Allen. I'm in Chicago at the Chez Paris with Edie Gourmet. Steve Rossi calls me up. He says, would you be interested in doing a team? And I'm saying, I don't want to be a team. I'm making a couple bucks. I'm happy. I'm doing well. He says, well, and that suggested. I says, well, why don't you fly in? He flew in, handsome, sang phenomenal, and very likable. And I said, well, I don't know. Maybe we could give it a shot. So I wrote routines, and then we worked it out together, and we played all kind of little places, any joint, anything. And I knew when I heard the audience react, you can tell it. When you hear the, the audience reacting, I said, well, maybe we have something. And we start building and building. And when we were ready, I called Nat. I said, OK, give us a shot. And he put us in the sands. We opened the show. And that was the beginning of Alan and Rossi. And Jack and Trotta said, hey, good act. I'm holding you over with Sinatra. <laughs> Sinatra? <laughs> and then we worked with Sinatra. And he kept us with Lena Horne and then that wonderful English singer, Shirley Bassey, and Paul Anka. And we did all those weeks. And that was the beginning. How long were you and Steve Rossi together? Well, let's see. I think it would be about 15 years. I think so. Time, I don't remember. All I know. Uh, and we played everything, and then we got to the point uh, that we became like headliners on all the television shows, uh, Hollywood Squares, Password, and everything. Yeah. More importantly, but, Ed but, Sullivan, right? Yeah. And, well, wait. And then we went to the Copacabana, which is the uh, made the Copacabana. My God, thank you, God, for what you did. We're at the Copa, and then we're hot, and then we start doing the Sullivan Show. Someone said, how many Sullivan shows did you do? I said, more than Ed Sullivan. <laughs> and uh, then he says, I'm holding you over. You're going to be with the Beatles. I said, the Beatles? I couldn't believe it, and I'll never forget that. Had to be 5,000 kids backstage, you know, on 53rd Street. And the police were holding them back, and the girls were yelling, Paul, Paul, Ringo, John. And I yelled, Marty, who? <laughs> <laughs> and that was yeah. it. And then we did the show and came out very well. Mm -hmm. And I knew right away the Beatles were going to be a big hit. I could tell right away. And then. They didn't know who we were, and at that time I had that wild hair, and I walk over to good, John. Good thing you got rid of that wild hair. <laughs> <laughs> I walked over to John Lennon, yeah. and I said, John, he had no idea who I was. He was getting ready. He said, yes. I said, a lot of people mistake me for you. <laughs> and he went, oh, really? Like, oh, my. <laughs> and he started laughing. And uh, that was it. Yeah, and you do a lot, so many things, uh, whether it's comedy, dancing, as you yeah, as you dancing. mentioned, acting, yeah, actually, singing. And I, I, yeah. before we uh, go on with the interview, we have, uh, I, I guess, some B-roll, some film of you know some of the things you do do. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look at that. Okay. So how it all actually began. Many years ago, Jackie Mason and Joan Rivers 
had an illicit love affair, and they had a love child. I am that love child. My mother giving me piano lessons. <laughs> Wow, and, and that wasn't all that long ago, and of course you were performing in, in that with your, your wife, right? But what had happened Karen. is Karen. Uh, we got to a point, uh, Steve and I, we kept going around and playing the Copa and the places were the same, and uh, then they started asking me to do acting parts. Uh, Barbara Stanwyck wanted me for Big Valley, and Hollywood Squares wanted me as a regular with Paul in. And uh, I talked it over with Steve, and we parted amicably. We are the only comedy team that I know of that parted as friends, mm -hmm. and we've been friends, you know, all all, our, all the years together. And uh, he was wonderful to work with, and I th thought I'd, I I had enough, uh, uh, and I start doing singles doing uh, dramatic parts, doing movies in Malta and London and different places. And then one day I went in a restaurant uh, in, in Los Angeles and the, and the very beautiful girl was, was the maitre d'. Mm -hmm. She was a singer and a piano player, but she didn't want to be on the road alone. So her friend says in the daytime, just, handled the restaurant. So I walked in, I see this gorgeous girl, and uh, she said, so, Mr. Allen, what can we do for you? And I said, I like a fruit salad. And then when she went, I wrote on the menu, I like the way you wear that dress. I prefer that better than the fruit salad. <laughs> and that was the beginning, yeah. and I met Karen and Karen is a dynamo, right. triple threat, piano player, singer, and developed into a fan. We are now called the uh, new George Burns and Gracie Allen 
only I'm Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand you're writing a book on pickup lines next. Well, no, I'm kidding. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, but I want to talk about, because you have written a book. Yeah. The name of the book is Hello There. Yeah. Which is a famous expression that yeah. you have uh, hope it's trademarked. It's like uh, <laughs> yeah. yours. Your yeah. expression is similar to hello there. Uh, enough said. Yeah. You know. How did you come up with the hello there? I don't know. Oh, it was in Philadelphia, Latin Casino, and uh, Steve said something to me, and I, I don't know what I was thinking. I kind of blanked out, mm -hmm. and I looked at him, and I went, hello there. <laughs> and he looked at me, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, hello there. And I noticed reaction in the audience, and, 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 and people were laughing and laughing. When the show was over, they said, hey, hello there. <laughs> and I said, oh, you wait yeah. all your life to find some kind of a catchphrase like you have. Uh, and hello there, I'm a bad boy. Um, you know, Joe Penner, all those guys uh, had catchphrases and that's how, and we started to take uh, personalities in the news and he'd say like, here's the, the head of Israel, I'd say shalom there, and uh, <laughs> the guy from France, bonjour there. Hola and, there. Uh, you yep. know. I, I mean, I talked a little bit about some of the things you do, you know, the dancing, the singing, yeah. the acting. I mean, you're a very um, complex uh, man. I mean, you're, you're, um, you have layers and layers of, uh, of intellect, and, and I know you're a... I'm, that, I'm a very... I was reading on an average of five books a week, and uh, and uh, in involved in different things. Uh -huh. And if I saw something that, that was of great interest worldwide, I would write my own. But I didn't do politics because you got to be careful. But but you're very well versed in yes. politics. I yes. mean, I've discussed politics with you. I mean, you you you're very current. You yeah. have very um, well founded opinions. Um, yeah. You are a uh, um, you know, uh, an avid reader, as you it's mentioned. It's my yeah. attitude toward yeah. people. Ed, I love people. I enjoy, someone says to me, I enjoyed your show. I said, thank you very much. I get letters. Uh, I was in the room. I was watching television. You made me laugh. Well, it hit me emotionally. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to do. Let them know that I am legit. I'm not a guy. Anybody that makes it, great, wonderful. I hope they make it on their own. And I, I'm not jealous of any comedian. There are a lot of comedians. I thought Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby, Mel Brooks. I love these kind of people. I love what they do. I go to see Rickles. I laugh because... Who, who's, who's older, you or Don Rickles? I, I'm older. You're, you're 92. I'm 92. And Don Rickles is what, 90? 88, I oh, so think. No, he's a kid. He's a kid. 89, yeah. yeah. And then, so at 92 years old, what motivated you to write a book? Well, I, I just felt that people should know of the period that we've had in our lives in which show business was at its height, that we had Sinatra, we had Elvis, we had Nat King Cole, we had Lena Horn, we had all these people, and the things happened between me and, and the personality, and I put it down uh, on the record. We have little stories with you yeah. and a lot of these celebrities. Well, we're in London yeah. appearing with Shirley Bassey, who's a brilliant singer, Gold and her singer. best friend was uh, Margaret, Princess Margaret, who came to see the show. Steve and I were doing the routine of the man in the moon. And I would be on the ladder and Steve said, what do you see up there? I'm with a helmet. A sign, <laughs> what does it say? Go home, Yank. She collapsed. She fell right off the seat. She thought that after the show, she said that was a, one of the funniest lines she ever heard. Go home, Yank. And uh, I sent her the album, she sent me a note. And it was a great thrill, you know. Yeah. 
How, how does that affect you now, Marty, um, when you see all these um, friends and acquaintances of yours uh, you know, as they pass on, uh, Steve Rossi, uh, yeah. and most recently, uh, well, Joan Rivers? It's, it's emotional, very emotional. Does it make you think about your own mortality? Or? Uh, I don't want to think, uh, think of it. I finally got what I really wanted. Uh, I said to Karen, I want, I want some, a, a wonderful birthday gift. I want an antique. So she framed my birth certificate. <laughs> 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 She's brilliant. She, and when we got together, uh, and she developed not well. She's a phenomenal singer and piano player. We're married thirty years. Yeah, thirty years. Which um, which death of some of the your friends has affected you the most? Affected me? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm affected by people in the news, emotionally, political, certain people, politically. Uh, I believe in a lot of the causes, and on my own, I take care, Karen and I take care of who we can take care of, uh, and, and I do it my way, you know, without making it a big deal, and, uh, and I want to go through life saying that I did this, and it, it, it came from my heart, that it came, I'm not being corny. Mm -hmm. It comes from my heart. It, 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 that's the way it is. How, how do you like to, or how do you want uh, people to think of you? That they enjoyed me, that I made them. Uh, if, if they saw me in a show or if they saw me on television, they said they got a big kick. They enjoyed what they saw, that I did clean, funny humor, that they related to and, and 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 I did my job. That's it. When you th when you think back about the um, all the shows you've done, all the movies, the television, um, what's been the most the one thing that you most enjoyed doing? Most enjoyed doing yeah, TV show or um, performance. Well, I liked acting. I did yeah. uh, uh, with Barbara Sandwick. Who, who called me into her, her dressing room and uh, said, Marty, you're, you could be a fine actor. You've done a magnificent job. I played a part of a Jonah. You know what a Jonah is. No. Jonah is the guy that goes to the ranch and the rains come and the cattle runs away and all these things happen. And the staff says it's his fault. He's a Jonah, a yeah. bad guy. Oh, okay. And I played this part. And Linda Evans and the, and the crew uh, were very complimentary. But she, Barbara said to me, you, you could be a fine actor. And, I, <laughs> and I, all I could, kept thinking is she was married to Robert Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on par with Robert Taylor. You've met a lot of people. Um, presidents, heads of state, yeah. uh, entertainers. Who was the person that affected you the most? Betty Ford. And why? Uh, uh, a friend of mine, Ray Caldero, arranged uh, when uh, he, he invited me to the White House. They were honoring uh, uh, an ambassador from one of the countries. and. Uh, I went with Ernie Borgnine and Tova, and they said, you gotta come. It was after uh, my first wife, Lorraine, had passed on, and uh, I was ready to make a move, so I went, and it was a delightful dinner, and then afterwards, she, I, I said, a lot of people mistake me for your husband. <laughs> well, she got hysterical. It was President started, Jerry yeah, Ford. I yeah, I started doing yeah. jokes, and then she says, I hear you're quite a dancer. Uh -huh. And I said, well, I know you're quite a dancer because she went, went to the dancing uh, academy. And I said, I'd love to dance with you. She said, well, why don't we try something? So we're in the ballroom and all the guests are around. Uh -huh. And I'm saying, what could the band play? So I walked over and I said, uh, 
Did you play something like up tempo that uh, me and right. the jitterbug? You're a jitterbug king, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm a yeah. jitterbug yeah. guy. The, he said, "Yeah, I feel the earth move." I'm Carol King skin. song, yeah. So he played it, and we danced, and <laughs> the crowd went wild, and he and uh, Gerald Ford were going, "Great, great, great!" <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So once again, let me ask you about. But also, yeah. all the things that she did. You know, talking about cancer right. and, their and clinic, all the right. uh, things that she was involved in. I think she was the first. Well, I think Eleanor Roosevelt and Betty Ford, in my estimation, have done more uh, for the advancement of women than anybody yeah. so far. Your book is um, available at Amazon.com. Yeah. Right? Hello there. There's a picture of... Uh, you want to talk that's about the picture? Me. I got a minute left. That's when yeah. I was a clown. Right. And You're uh, not a clown anymore? <laughs> well, I, I did a bit yeah. uh, Ed, in which I played a clown who in the circus goes out and entertains, yeah. and suddenly he looks in the mirror and he suddenly realizes he's getting old. Yeah. And at the utmost moment of dejection, he puts the makeup on, puts the smile back on, looks out, the music plays, da da, and he goes off, and that's the is, way. Is, I is that the way you view life? I got 15 seconds left. I know it's a profound question, yes. but that seems to me the way you are that's the way right I now at 92 years You're old. You're right, Ed. Yeah. You're right. Marty Allen. I'm 92 years. Yeah. I finally got what I wanted: regularity. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go out and buy the book. You, there's not. This is a time and place that is unbelievable in uh, American entertainment history. It um, is. Uh, yeah, it's my it's pleasure. It's a history. Yeah, and I'm just thrilled to have Marty Allen here. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate being with you. Yeah, the, uh, book on pickup lines. Call <laughs> <laughs> See you next week.